Hey guys, JC back with you. Um, doing finally, finally, finally getting to the software rundown of the next bit Robin. Uh, this is going to be a real quick software rundown, so just going to kind of run you through the basics of it. Um, if you are familiar with stock Android, you're going to see a lot of things that are similar, uh, which is good. Uh, we like stock Android. Stock Android is good. Um, it's Google's intended version of the way the software should work, and that's always good. Um, it's more secure. It's more stable. That kind of stuff. So. If you're familiar with stock Android, you're going to be pretty similar to this. Honestly, if you're familiar with any sort of Android operating system, uh, you'll probably be, be able to pick up on this pretty quickly. Um, but I've already set up my fingerprint in there, so I'm just going to kind of give you a view of the lock screen. So this is what your lock screen is going to look like. Um, you got that beautiful clock widget there, kind of double line clock widget. 0842, you got the weather there. Um, so these are kind of some notifications that you're going to see here. Um, you know, this is the way that the notifications again, it's just very beautiful, very clean. Um, there's a lot of whites, a lot of greens, um, a lot of clear, kind of a lot of you know, transparent um, stuff going on here, which is beautiful, which I really, really love. Um, again, you can go straight into Google search down here, um, or you can uh, directly open up the camera. So, um, you know, you'll see that this is how notifications appear both on the lock screen and you'll see um, in, the, in the notification drop down as well, uh, notification area. So, let me go ahead and get on into the phone. Oh, don't need to see where I, huh, I ordered my dinner from there. Anyway, uh, it's a really good Chinese place if you're anywhere near Houston. Uh, but anyway, so I have my some of my apps set up on here and everything. Uh, just a real quick rundown of the software. Again, pretty similar. Um, you can see you got your Google search widget up top. Let's see. Look, take a look at the notification shade, as you can see there. Um, you know, again, these are how your, your notifications are going to look. Uh, if we swipe down here, you got the dual, you know, you do the dual, dual swipe. So there's, there's two ways of doing it, basically. Uh, you can either swipe down and then swipe down again, and it'll bring you to the quick settings menu. Or again, you can just swipe down with two fingers, and it'll bring you to the quick settings menu. Um, I haven't really found a way to be able to adjust the quick settings panel yet. Some manufacturers allow you to do that. Some don't. So we will see uh, you know, if, if I can end up figuring out how to do it. Uh, if anybody knows, hit me up because I haven't figured it out yet. But anyway, there it is. Um, you got your basics. You know, Do not disturb. Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, auto-rotate. You got a flashlight there, which is nice. It's nice and bright. It's actually really bright, bright flashlight. Um, you can go straight to Google Cast and Hotspot as well there. Um, so again, just beautiful notifications. All the way they've done is they've toned down the colors a little bit again. Um, so it's a little bit more greenish than blue. It's really hard to see in this camera. I'm sorry. If you guys continue to like and subscribe, I might be able to afford a better camera. So, But uh, for now, this is what uh, we're going to work with. So as you can see, kind of blues there. Uh, they've toned down the, gr the blues. It's a little more greenish. Kind of a green tint, mint green tint, which is beautiful. Um, let's go in real quick. I'll show you that we are running um, Android 6.0, which is very nice. Uh, Marshmallow, which is what we like to see. It is running the January 1st security patch. Um, for those of you that don't know, Google has started uh, doing monthly security patch updates for the um, for their version of the Android software. So then, you know, on the Nexus phones, those are the first to get it, obviously. And then it's up to the manufacturers to um, incorporate it into their software. So this phone actually launched officially in February, um, started shipping um, pretty soon after there. I got mine, um, you know, about a week ago, maybe a little more than a week. So mid-March, the phones have actually been in hand probably since the beginning of March. Um, so, you know, January 1 security patch is good, um, but we're really hoping that next bit um, we'll start uh, sending some more out. We already know that they are working on a software update. They're already working on an update for the camera. Um, they did notify back to me that um, as the security patches come from Google, they start working on them um, pretty quickly. So they're hoping to get them out pretty pretty soon. Um, unfortunately, only time will tell how good they are on those uh, software updates, on those security patches. Only time will tell. Um, so hopefully they can stay pretty on top of it because you know, so far I like the phone and as the phone gets more popular and as more people buy it, they're going to want it more secure. So we'll see how well they do on that. Um, again, other than that, basic, pretty much the settings are the same. You know, anything you're, you're used to here. The only other difference is going to be smart storage. Again, this is how the cloud storage, um, you know, so this is how much I have here locally on the phone. As you can see, I got 14 gigs available um, and then I've got 96 gigs left in the cloud. Um, so real quick, I want to show you the, the the buttons here at the bottom. So you got your home button, all right, it's a circle, pretty typical uh, Android, but they've changed it up a little bit. So the back button is actually just a half circle, which is really cool, um, and it points down when the keyboard is up, so you can, you know, hide the keyboard. And the multitasking button, or the, you know, app switcher button, um, is another half circle. So I actually think it's really cool. Um, pretty easy to figure out, you know, pretty easy to discern there. So nothing big. Um, you can see my apps here. Uh, I, first of all, I also really, really like Nextbit's 
um, the way they've designed their their built-in apps. I really hope they issue like an icon pack or something like that that you'd be able to install on third-party launchers um, to be able to get these icons because there's their phone icon, the camera icon, um, there's the calculator clock, downloads icon, things like that. The settings icon is very beautifully done. It's this green, um, very beautiful green here. Um, as you can see here, I don't know if you've been following this phone much, but one of the biggest things kind of broke the internet actually was there's no app drawer. Where's the app drawer? And a lot of people are freaking out. They're saying, next bit, I want an app drawer. I don't understand why there's no app drawer. I want all my apps to be in an app drawer. And my head's going to explode if you don't give me an app drawer. Where'd it go, next bit? Uh, honestly, I don't really care. Um, Phil Nickinson, from who's the editor-in-chief of Android Central, actually put it really well. He said, basically, his kind of point was, really? Like you're you're flipping your lid over that. I mean, there's his basically basically his point was if you don't like it, there's other launchers. The Google Now launcher is great. There's plenty of other launchers that will give you an app drawer if you really have to have an app drawer that badly. Guys, it's an app drawer. Get used to it. It's it's fine. Um, that is one similarity of they probably took from the iPhone is the, what they call I guess the springboard UI um, in that there's no app drawer. Um, but it hasn't really, honestly, it hasn't really bothered me at all. I don't really miss having an app drawer at all. Maybe that's because I've been using an iPhone for a little while. I'm kind of used to it. I don't really know. But it hasn't bothered me. So as I swipe over, there's a little cloud animation that happens right here, which is just beautiful. Um, this is the, the stock wallpaper you'll get with the Robin. Um, I really love what they've done with the UI. I love the colors um, that they've they've chosen to go with. I love just the, the simplicity of it. Like I said, the transparency. Uh, it's just beautiful. It's just beautiful. I really, really liking this. Um, yes, I'm in Houston, Texas, so it's one of those stalkers. Uh, there you go. Um, so yeah, there is no app drawer. Now again, kind of the big uh, selling point for this phone, the big idea behind the Robin is uh, cloud storage or the kind of limitless storage, so to speak. So real quick, how it works is uh, there's the smart storage that I was showing you earlier. If we go back into settings here, um, this smart storage. Basically, how it works is you get 32 gigs locally on the phone. There's no micro SD card slot, but you get 100 gigabytes of cloud storage. And how the cloud storage works is as you fill up your phone, as you fill up this 32 gigabytes, the phone will intelligently note, um, it will intelligently like notice and identify your oldest pictures um, and apps that you haven't used in a while, and it will send those to the cloud. It will kind of remove those off the phone and send those to the cloud um, to store them there. Um, it will leave a little grayed out icon. So for instance, say uh, the Weather Channel ended up going to the cloud. Um, it would be grayed out there, which means that the, like it still knows that I have the app. And if I wanted to re-download the app, all I had to do is tap on it and the, the app would come back down from the cloud. Um, so it's kind of cool how that works and it, it does it all seamlessly. I haven't really had a chance to test it out yet, but according to the, the next bit and some of the reviews out there, it does it just seamlessly. The phone does it automatically um, and it's really simple, really easy to do. Um, and as you're doing it, there's four little lights that'll light up back here. So if you see those lighting up, that means it's sending to the cloud, which is really cool. Um, so that's kind of how the storage works. Now say you're like, oh, hey, Weather Channel. I use that app all the freaking time. It's my best, it's my most amazing app. I sh just love it so much, best app ever. I don't ever want to lose that app forever. You take that app away from me and I will kill you. Well, there's a way you can do that. You can pin apps to the phone, to the, so the phone will know, hey, don't ever get rid of these apps ever. Like whatever you gotta do, don't lose this app. Um, it's pretty simple how you can do that. Um, easiest way to do it is you just swipe down like that. So I swipe down and now it says my IQ pinned successfully. All right, say I wanna you know, unpin it, so I do wanna get rid of it. Then I can just swipe down again, boom, unpinned. Look at that, very cool. Um, so now you may ask, well, what's that little gray bubble there at the bottom? What is that doing there? I don't understand. You keep swiping and it doesn't go away. Is that an app? What app is that? Because I must have it. It's not an app. You tap on that. And that will give you your archived apps, which are apps that have been sent to the cloud. So you can look and see which apps are in the cloud. It'll show you your pinned apps. Oops, excuse me. <laughs> it'll show you all the apps that are stored on the phone that aren't going to go anywhere. And then it'll show you all apps. So you go into all apps and it'll show all the apps on the phone. Um, there we go. There we go. Whoops, I tapped twice. I'm so sorry. Yes, Amazon. Okay. Boom. So it'll show you all the apps on the phone. 
pretty cool. Again, you um, so it, it these uh, it comes with a lot of Google apps installed. Pretty sure the only ones that I've downloaded were like Stories and maybe Play Movies and a couple others. Um, but most of these apps you'll get with the phone. Um, it's actually pretty cool. So when the when you first get the phone, it's got all of Nextbits um, uh, apps on there, which is just just a few. You know, contacts, messaging. I think they've got um, go away. I think they've got the calculator, the clock, the downloads. Um, let's see if there's anything else. The gallery. Um, and settings, and then the phone and the camera. Those are pretty much it. And then you get a folder of Google apps because Google says you have to do that. And that's pretty much all the apps you get with the phone. There's no bloatware. Um, some of you might have seen the T-Mobile app right there, the visual voicemail. For those of you that don't know, that's the T-Mobile app. I downloaded that. I installed that because I'm a T-Mobile customer. So that's pretty much it. We were just doing basic rundown of the software, how you can pin apps, things like that. Um, it's pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, if you're familiar at all with Android, um, you're going to be pretty familiar with this. Uh, so again, like I said, what you get on the phone is mostly just Google apps um, and a couple of Nextbit apps like calculator, clock, downloads, um, phone, camera, uh, contacts, messaging, gallery, I think is one. Yeah, gallery there, so that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I love Disney movies. Okay, sue me. Um, so anyway, that's pretty much it. Um, pretty basic cloud storage. If you guys have any questions, um, you know, hit me up in the comments. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, that really, really helps. Seriously. Um, next video, we're going to do a comparison of this guy versus the iPhone 6S. What are the similarities? What are the differences? How are you going to like it? Um, real quick, I'm glad I remember because I almost forgot and I'm so sorry. Um, haven't really seen much lag. There's been one instance where the phone, um, froze on me and I, and all I had to do was just kind of let it sit for about 30 seconds. And then it kind of caught up to itself. Um, but I was doing some pretty intense stuff. I was going back and forth from apps really quickly, trying to sign in and sign out and stuff at the same time. Um, and I think I was loading Netflix at the time too. So I was kind of putting it through its paces when it did that. I've noticed very, very little lag. Um, there's been maybe once or twice where it's kind of hiccuped, um, and had to kind of stop and like, take an extra breath and then do it again. Um, but nothing unusual, definitely nothing stand out, nothing to make me not recommend the phone, nothing to make me say, oh my God, that sucked, next bit, get on that. Um, so very, very fluid. Haven't really noticed anything at all. Um, you know, so again, hit me up in the comments, like, subscribe. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see, like I said, we're going to do an iPhone 6X comparison next, see how that works. Um, try to do some other Android phones. Like I said, it's going to be really tough because uh, I don't work for a review website, so any phones that I get, I'm going to have to pay for out of pocket, uh, which would be kind of difficult because I don't really have a whole lot of money. So, um, if anybody wants to send me a phone that they want me to review, I'd be more than happy to do that. Um, or if you've got a specific phone that you want to see, um, hit me up. I'll do my best to try to compare the two, but I can't promise. Um, so anyway, hit me up, like, comment, subscribe, please. I love you guys. Spread the word. Tell your friends. If you like my reviews, if you like the way I do my reviews, you know, very unbiased kind of, um, you know, just regular dude, reviews from a regular dude. If you think I'm funny, if you think I'm crazy, you know, if you like what you see, please, please, please tell your friends. It's the only way we're going to spread the word um, about this kind of stuff. So again, and that's the software on the next bit, Robin. Very quick rundown. Stay tuned for a comparison with the Galaxy S6. Like, comment, subscribe. I love you guys. This is JC. Peace out.